Hello and welcome to this edition of Exotic Gardening UK, Yorkshire Chris Weekly. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how I turned my 50 year old garage or garage into a greenhouse. So I've always wanted a large greenhouse but couldn't really afford it and I didn't have the space in my garden really to put a great big new greenhouse so I thought about converting my garage into a greenhouse or at least a grow space. I've had smaller normal size greenhouses in the garden which fitted but they were not big enough for what I wanted to do and my garage which is built in the 1970s I just filled it up with junk and it was never used for a car or really a workshop or anything like that so I thought it'd be an ideal space to turn into a greenhouse. So I've done this project bit by bit over this year and there's many stages to it. Basically we started off with an old garage, it was built probably not to building regulations before, well, before building regulations in the 1970s in the UK and it's, it was very dusty, very dirty. It's got a tiled roof, very heavy cement tiles and it's got double thick brick walls with some piers as well and an old garage door that doesn't really fit properly and the floor is just a concrete floor that was painted at some point in the past and I thought it's a great space, standard size, so it's 10 foot by 20 foot, so 3 metres by 6 metres, give or take, and what I decided to do was turn it into a greenhouse. So I cleared everything out, and then I looked at how the roof was constructed, and I realised that it's, it's wooden rafters, and I think the pitch is good enough to have either a glass or a polycarbonate roof and I decided to go down the route of a polycarbonate roof, so something like you get on conservatories, and I've gone for a 16 millimeter thick polycarbonate sheeting roof. And the first big job we did was strip the old tiles off the roof. I didn't do that personally. I got somebody to do that for me who's experienced with roofing, and they just took them all away, which was great. The side sort of flashing towards the front and the back of the greenhouse had some old um, asbestos, asbestos sheeting so that got taken away and professionally disposed of as well. And then it was all clear. Um, and the wood itself for the, for the rafters was obviously 50 years old but in good condition, no rot or anything like that. And I decided to paint that sort of bright white so it adds to sort of reflecting light about the space and I've also painted the walls sort of a magnolia colour so not quite bright white but still adds lots of reflective light when the sun shines in here and even when it just had the roof on it was still a lot brighter once I painted the walls from before and on the outside I painted the outside as well added soffits and fascias all the way around changed the guttering made that improved and when the roof was off, I realised when I got my polycarbonate sheets, I had to cut them and make them exactly the right size. So I tried to get some pre-cut to roughly the right size, but the actual wooden rafters were sort of put on not really to any sort of standard sizing or spacing or anything like that. And some were narrower at the top than at the base and the other way around. So my nice cut sheets of polycarbonate didn't fit so I had to get a jigsaw and cut them exactly to the right size and place them on getting up on the roof with a ladder and I used some nice quality aluminium bars that fit on top of the polycarbonate sheets 
and they grip with like a rubber gasket the polycarbonate sheet on top of the wooden rafter so make a nice watertight seal and this wasn't the cheapest option but I thought it would look the best and it will last for a long time and it'll be the strongest because it's quite windy around here so I need something really strong to keep the sheets on. So we did it one by one starting at one end clamped them down with the metal bars that are aluminium and the powder coated white on top as well so it's got a really nice finish and the bars are 45 millimeters wide so they're just a little bit smaller than the actual wooden rafters but when they're pressed down it covers them nicely and from under underneath you can't see them at all and from the outside I think it's a really good finish and gone all the way across on both sides and did that then we put on top where the meat right at the top I use a, a very long six meter long hip bar and that stops obviously the water coming through the roof and then put a nice clean white metal trim on top of that which just presses down with a rubber mallet so that was the roof and then it came to the actual floor and I wanted a good quality flooring in here I didn't just want the painted concrete floor from the garage so I needed something nice and level as well because there's loads of marks in here loads of holes so I filled some holes with cement and then I got some self leveling compound and laid that all across the floor on a quite a nice warm day and when I did that it took a lot of leveling compound to do I think it was about 19 20 bags something like that to do the full floor and I had to do that really quickly because you've got to do it all in one part otherwise you get unevenness the whole point of doing it is to get a nice level finish because the floor beforehand like I said was it wasn't nowhere near flat so that was done and then once that was off went set off and dried I then decided to put tiles in here so gone for these large outdoor ceramic tiles and they're sort of 3D texture so they've got a bit of grip and I think it's a really nice finish in here and I laid them cut them at the sides as well and then once that was done the last big thing to do in here was to change the garage door so gone was the metal garage door that didn't fit properly at all and installed instead was some nice patio doors basically so it's not something you normally see on a garage but I thought it fitted well with trying to use it as a greenhouse I've got big I think about 2.5 meters 2 meters across by 2.1 meters tall big patio doors with little windows as well which would be great in summer for adding ventilation just opening those side windows but the double doors allow me to get a, a all my furniture in here and also to get a wheelbarrow in and out as well and it's completely weather sealed so there's no gaps and then around the edges where the eaves of the polycarbonate go over and meet the wooden side above the bricks and the windows I've put loads of insulating fleece in that gap where the overhang is just to add the insulation and I've sealed all the joints all around as well underneath where the wood meets the brick and where the flashing and the fascias go on as well so that's all nice and airtight there and in here I've got a large window we already had and at the back I had a rotten window wooden window so that was changed for a new PVC window as well so a lot of work's gone into this if this was going to be a greenhouse not here but somewhere else in the garden built to this sort of standard it would cost probably at least 10 15 thousand pounds I've done everything in here I think for it less than three and a half, four thousand pounds to do everything here, including the patio doors, the windows, the tile in the floor, the paint, the rafters, everything in here. So I think that's decent value for money for which is a really good quality finish in my opinion. And hopefully it'll give people inspiration if they have an old garage that they don't really use, they could turn it into a grow space like this. 
So thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found it interesting and entertaining, inspirational. And if you've not subscribed, it'd be great if you could subscribe using the bell button below and the subscribe button. And then you can see all my videos on growing exotic plants in the Northern Hemisphere. So thank you for watching.